Alrighty, um, I can't get it running again until tomorrow because the stepper will be in tomorrow. I suspect the stepper is bad. It's not putting out enough torque. Um, but I did finish reinforcing the printer. If you want to reinforce this printer, if you decide to get it for whatever reason, or if you have a similar printer that needs reinforcement, uh, what you need is these. These are 2020 corner brackets. Then you'll need some M4 or M5 8 millimeter, no longer, um, cap screws and some hammer nuts to go with it. And that's what I did here. So now I have one of these on all four corners, these two, and there's two more back here. And then I have, I decided since there was enough room, you can see, it clears fine. Although I may end up getting rid of that and replace it with a T-bracket here just so that I can put larger um, bed leveling screws on here. Because there's enough room here for very large bed leveling nuts. Um, but this takes away a lot of that room. You can see I lose a lot of that room right there because of that. So I may get rid of that one because I don't think it's necessary. And one probably adds enough to help. But now this whole thing is a lot more rigid. It does not jiggle around nearly so much. Uh, because some of the load when I push is being transferred to the other aluminum extrusion instead of being transferred to the acrylic. Bad move. Um, Zone Star, bad move. These two beams need to be integrated like I just did. They need to be connected to each other. Um, that's it. I may also replace this bed because this is um, wheel driven so I would only need to drill eight holes four for the corners and the four for the four wheels so I could replace this with an aluminum plate I may do that because I really don't like the idea of this acrylic plate here <coughs> I'm okay with this acrylic this is fine as long as these are reinforced but I don't like this I mean maybe I'll probably leave it until it fails and then when I replace it I'll replace it with aluminum but um, when I replace it it'll be replaced with aluminum just because I don't like the acrylic. I think that's a bad place for acrylic, especially because this doesn't use linear rails. It uses, um, you know, UM88 bearings. It uses the roller bearings, the V the V wheels inside here. Let me show you. Easy enough to show you. See? It uses the V wheels like the CR10. It's one of the reasons I picked this printer, because I like that. It used that. Um, I think those are putting a lot of strain on that acrylic and I think over time Those wheels pushing outward are going to crack that acrylic And then this bed which is now very tight. You see there's no wobble now this bed wiggled around a lot now there's no wobble at all because I've integrated this beam to this beam while before there was literally two bolts holding this beam on I think I think it's two Let me double check that I believe it is two Yep, one there, and one back there. Oh, wait a minute, uh, there is none in the middle. So this entire beam was held on to this acrylic by two bolts, two hammer nuts into the extrusion. That's dumbass. That's really, I'm sorry, that's really dumb. Um, I gotta watch the language. You know, children watch this, so I gotta be conscious of that. Really boner move, um, Zone Star. At the minimum, this should have had double the number of bolts attaching it, but no matter what, this acrylic should have simply been an attachment base like the Ender. Okay? The Ender does not depend on that acrylic bottom for anything except to mount the parts. That's it. This one was actually using the acrylic structurally. You, this acrylic was actually holding this up because while these two beams cross each other there's a cutout in this beam you saw it when I built it there's a cutout in this beam so it fits over this beam so this beam and this beam were never connected that's dumb <laughs> I mean that's really dumb you, you, you get no rigidity and worse you're now transferring load forces to something not designed to take load forces acrylic something known to crack so thankfully this is easy to fix you should, if you're a DIY 3D printer, you should already have a bag of these. I keep a bag on hand at all times. I think I paid 10 bucks for this whole bag. And you can get it cheaper from China. I paid from Amazon. And then you also need, and should already have, an assortment of M234 and 5 bolts. 
and um, and of course an assortment of hammer nuts. So um, here's my clips and stuff, but um, here's my M4 hammer nuts and my M5 hammer nuts. But that's something you should always have on hand. And um, it's simple enough. You need eight millimeter, anything longer than eight millimeter, and the bolt will hit the inside of the extrusion before it's tightened down. So you need eight millimeter, M5 or M4, and then you put. You could probably get it. You could probably get away with caddy quartering two of these. So one here and one across there, but they're so cheap. I just put four on. Screw it. And then um, I'm going to leave this one here because that's not going to be in the way. This one here I will probably remove and add something either on the end here or here. Just why not? I mean, might as well. I can even use two of these. Um, bolt one in here, one in here, so that they face each other and then bolt them together. But that's kludgy. Or I don't even need that all together. This is prob this is a, this is a pretty good build, and this is 2040. This 1010 is the one I wanted to really stiffen up. So I could probably get away with not having one here since this is 2040 extrusion. It's plenty stiff. And um, that's it. So tomorrow I will replace the stepper when I get home tomorrow night. And we will see if we can breathe life back into this machine because it's actually doing a pretty good job. I'll give you a sneak peek. Here's the bench you printed. That's really not bad. And I did no tuning or anything. I just... Stuffed a Benji on there with settings that made sense, and I clicked go. Almost no stringing. Very clean. There's a little bit of wobbling right there. I'm not sure what that is, but overall, relatively low noise. It's got a lot of noise, but it's consistent and even. Um, nice print. The bottom looks good. The text is nice and crisp and readable. Leveling it was surprisingly easy, considering how wobbly it is. Um, of course, you can't read the text on the back, but you kind of can. You can see the hashtag 3D. And you know that's benchy, but it's a little hard to read. But not bad. That's a that's a pretty good um, that's a pretty good benchy, especially for something that's not reinforced, not tuned for a little crap box, two hundred and twenty dollar printer. And so you know, five bucks in components, and you can reinforce it nicely. The blower design seems nice, but um, it needs something that the other printer needed. Let's see if you see here. Um, too much of this air is cooling down the nozzle so I'm gonna wrap it it's got cap down tape around the nozzle but I'm gonna wrap it with some foam I got some foam insulation so I'm gonna wrap the the hot end with some foam but this needs a little tab to come out like CNC kitchens does a little tab to stick out a little further here to make sure the air goes to the part and not to the nozzle because it's very hard to get this thing above 210 degrees it just doesn't want to go 210 212 about the highest I was able to reliably get it unless I put my hand over the fan to stop it from cooling and then the temperature climbed rapidly so good cooling fan good parts cooling fan but it's not adjusted right it could be as simple as lowering this a little bit so that it hits the part more but then you're gonna run into getting it too low so it just needs a little extension on there so that the air doesn't impinge the hot end directly otherwise it's not bad <laughs> It's a Tinkerer printer. This is a printer that, if you want better quality than an A8, but you still want to tinker, but you don't want to have to build absolutely everything. Um, you know, this assembly is already built. This assembly is already built. Um, you know, you don't have to absolutely build everything. It's a largely assembled kit kind of thing. Uh, you saw my video two hours. I from start to finish, even with all my messing around I got it finished in two hours but um, it's not bad it's it's got some potential as long as that as long as that wobble there is not endemic into the hardware it could be a decent little um, bot to just make stuff we'll see um, I would not suggest this as a beginner's printer not a beginner's printer this is um, a printer for a tinkerer who just wants another bot to play with to toy around with, who wants, you know, good extrusions, who has the wherewithal to make the necessary modifications to beef it up a little bit, and who doesn't mind tinkering, and you just want something cheap to play with, because it, it is cheap. Um, if you don't need the larger build volume, obviously go with the Ender. Way, way, way better printer. I mean, night and, night and day. This is like... Well, this is junk compared to the Ender 2. <laughs> but um, this does have a bigger build volume. I would say this is 
not quite as good as the, as far as quality, not quite as good as the One Hound Duplicator i3 or the Maker Select. Maybe these reinforcements will bring it up to par. I don't know. Although, this doesn't need as many modifications as the One Hound Maker Selects need to get working right. Depending on how long the acrylic lasts. I mean, it is a very thick piece of acrylic. But I really do not like that particular part being acrylic. I don't care if all this is acrylic, you know. I don't care if these, some of these plates are acrylic. That's fine. They're not load-bearing. That's a load-bearing part. That should not be acrylic. That's it. More to come. The hand is fine. It, it'll heal fine. You see it's not swelling. It's not red. It's not inflamed. You know, I have the one super sticky stretchy bandage to um keep the, um, the, the skin pulled together. And the, um, then I have the this really sticky tape so that when I flex the bandage doesn't come off and it doesn't do anything but you know everything moves you know I didn't cut a tendon or anything like that so I got lucky really really dumb move what I was doing I guess I can show you what I was doing sometimes a print if you have the nozzle too close to the bed or depending on the, the type of material it is the um the print in Z can cement itself to the the plastic and make it really hard to get off. So my Leatherman here is seriously sharp. Like I can I can slice uh, see I can shave the print in Z with this. That's how sharp this knife is. It's it's stupid stupid sharp. And usually it just takes a little prick because this is the the finest edge I have. And it usually takes just a little prick underneath the plastic and and then that's enough to break the the joint and it pops off. This one didn't want to pop off. I think it's because of the type of plastic it is. It's um, Protopasta's HD PLA V3. It's the High Five Blue. Gorgeous, by the way. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. Wait until you see my review of this PLA. I wish I could afford to buy rolls of this PLA. It is so, so pretty. I love blue. Blue is my second favorite color next to orange. and This blue is amazing. Um, but I, I was like this, you know, trying to pry it off. And as you can see, I'm starting to damage it. And because I have a very limited supply of this plastic, I didn't want to destroy the print. Um, so I came like a dumbass. Sorry. <sighs> I'm going to get the language under control. Like a dum-dum. Um, I came back like this. And um, over here like this. On the smaller printer. And I was trying to pull it like this. And when I got under... I made, I put my hand down on the table right here, on the other table, I put my hand down right here like this, and so what happened is when it came free, my hand turned like this, and the blade went right into my hand. Yeah, it went about that far into my hand. I didn't even feel it go in, it was so fast and so sharp, it just, it went right in like it was a hot knife through butter. <laughs> this thing really is stupid, stupid sharp. And that's what you want your tools. Your tools are supposed to be sh stupid sharp. But you're not supposed to use a, a knife as a prying tool. That's true too. Someone actually made a ultra sharp tool for getting prints off that is not dangerous. It's what you're supposed to use. And I'm going to print one. Matter of fact, if I have enough of the um, the blue, I'm going to use it. To make the, the, the super thin little um, razors, the double edged razors that have the little squeakly hole in the middle. They're really, really thin. Um, you can use them for actually shaving razors. Well, not only are they stupid razor sharp, but they're super thin. So you can put them down on the print bed and shimmy them under your print without a lot of force. You don't have to apply force. They're so thin and so sharp that you just wiggle them in. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And they just go in and they pop your print off. I need to print some of those. And I need to get some of those blades so I can properly remove these stubborn prints without using a freaking Leatherman. <laughs> because... That was pretty close to going into my chest. If it had missed my hand, it might have been a knife blade in my chest. That was stupid. I mean, sharp tools protocol. You do not ever pull the knife toward you. And I wasn't paying attention. And I violated that rule. It was stupid. All right. You guys have a great night. I'll provide links to this kind of stuff. Um, if you need this kind of stuff fast, you can get it on Amazon. If you don't need it fast, just order from China. You know, it'll come eventually it's, it's it's all made in china anyway <laughs> um 
this stuff is amazing. Uh, I'll provide a link to it. I don't get nothing if you buy it. I don't care. This It really is beautiful. This is because I had it running at too low a temperature. Um, you can't print this at 195. It doesn't print right. It really is more comfortable at 215. And when you print it at 215, it is perfect. Absolutely beautiful filament. I love this filament. That's it. You guys have a great night. I'll get this thing running again tomorrow. A little sneak peek. <gasps> another Luby. That's right. Luby released another model. So that should be done tomorrow night. That'll be in the next Mega Print episode. I got all the sample prints I got off the Zone Star. Um, I'll get it running again. I'm going to print this thing out next on the Ender. But I'm going to get something else interesting printed on, on the Zone Star too. Because white's hard to see. And we shall go from there. You guys have a great night.